Uh, tributes have been paid to the television chef, one half of the Hairy Bikers, Dave Myers. Dave Myers died at the age of 66. His death came just two years after revealing that he'd been diagnosed with cancer and his Hairy Bikers co-presenter, Cy King, broke the news on social media. He said, my best friend is on a journey that, for now, I can't follow. So I wrote, I miss him every day and the bond of friendship we shared over half a lifetime. Dave's wife, Liliana Myers, wrote on Facebook, Rest in peace, my love, my wonderful, brave man. Till next time we meet. Fans on social media said the Hairy Bikers had inspired them to try more cooking. Hannah Cooper wrote, The Hairy Bikers helped me learn to cook. I use their recipes most weeks. And their friendship was always a joy to watch. They've been part of our daily family life on screen and in the kitchen for a long time. And here's a rather delightful picture posted by the family of young Zoe... Uh, she dressed up as Dave for a school fancy dress day. Nice job, by the way. That was really nicely done. Uh, the family says she started getting interested in cooking because of him. And she'll be devastated. What a tribute. That's a lovely tribute, isn't it? It was on a what, was it? It was a uh, Catherine, Catherine Cookson, Cookson drama. drama. So you both yeah. worked as crew. Yes, of course. And, um, yeah, it was great. And, yeah, I just got the job. You'd been there a while with the crew. And I just got introduced to everybody and went down for lunch and met and then he sold me a really bad motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting to get half the money back. Oh, wow. It's fantastic. It's so simple. We get to eat the tiger cow. Whoa. Oh. So would you prep me tater? I can do that. What did yeah. you say there, Myers? You went fondant. Fondant. You? fondant. you did. One does. Steady now, steady. First off, this I'm is going a, this to is... barrel me buffalo. <laughs> oh! <laughs> foot Welcome to dancing, buddy. Good, step, step forward. Good, and now, yes, and now drag. Good, but do the same thing with both feet. I love it when you go to a chef. I'm a cook. And you know, I don't know how he's done this, but I don't care, it's just joyous. Um, and th th there's a lot of that. And then we cook our food, and it's the pair of us cooking away as, as we are, we've, we've done for 30 years. Yeah. Um, it's not hard, really. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been amazing. It has, bro. It has. It has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can talk now to the chef, Rick Stein. Rick, good morning to you. Um, good morning, Becca. I think one of the things there, just seeing all those clips, all that film of um, Dave, is that his personality shone through. And yet, and so we, you know, so many people know him as a personality, don't they? And they loved him and Simon together. But actually, he was a really good cook as well, wasn't he? He was really respected by all his peers, by people like you. Well, he certainly was. I mean, I think the thing about Dave, he was just very nice, you know? And it's sort of like um, the hairy bikers go west. And it, it's really quite moving because I didn't realise watching it that actually Dave was not at all well. I thought he'd got over the cancer. But you can see the, the great affection they have for each other. And I think male relationships like that, funny enough, um, I, I did a little piece on Laurel and Hardy, not that they were alone at Laurel and Hardy, but you, you can see that bond between them that, that is so attractive to people, I think. Uh, Rick, morning to you. It's, it's Charlie here. Uh, the other thing that quite a few people have uh, sort of drawn attention to is they never seem to lose that delight in basically being paid to do the thing they loved and being on telly and doing it. And it's almost like that always came across. There was no complacency there. They were just like, here we are, we're lucky, and we're doing it. Yeah, and that, I think that's just why they were so popular, because people like real people, you know? There's, they're just authentic. Both of them were, were authentic. And, I mean, it, it's just a, 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 rare, a, a rare gift, I think, if you are authentic. People warm to you, and, I mean, they're just... But the thing I like about them is that they're from the north of England, all right? And when I when I met Cy in Australia, I suddenly realised people from the north, I mean, he was from Durham and and uh, Dave was from, um, is from Durham and Dave was from Barrow and Furness. It's just this sort of straightness they have, you know? And the Aussies loved Cy simply because he just said what he meant, you know, and there's no guile. I'm not knocking the southern people at all, that's where I come from, but... 
There's something really special about people from the north of England, I think. Do you know, um, one of the things was as well, and I think Charlie picked up on it as well, is that they cooked stuff that people could see themselves cooking. It wasn't beyond, yeah. you know, the realms. It wasn't all Michelin star quality or, you know, posh restaurant quality. It was stuff that you could do at home. And that really marked a turn, didn't it, in cookery programmes over the last couple of decades? I think it, I think it did. I mean, it's funny because I think in Australia, again, somebody was saying um, oh, about one of my books, but there's equally... That's proper cooking. It's not project cooking, right? <laughs> project cooking is when you're trying things that are really too difficult and you shouldn't be bothering with. They just cook real food and, and naturally everybody's drawn to it. Uh, Rick, it's been lovely talking to you this morning. Thank you very much and just uh, musing a little bit on uh, the magic of uh, Dave Myers. And uh, I think everyone was sort of correspond with that thought uh, today. Thank you very much. Mag magic, he was. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. Mm. Lovely, Rick Stein.